currently a Rural City Council. I am not currently running for anything. I'm just here to you know, uh, support all of our great candidates who are running. Um, I'll give you a quick update. As you all know, we have a lot of things going on at City Hall. There is never a dull moment in Aurora. Um, unfortunately, my colleagues have decided to just punch down as a strategy to motivate their base. You know, we're discussing a camping ban. Um, I think you all know, especially any of y'all who go to Denver on a regular basis, that camping bans don't work. They don't do anything. So I feel like our role in the minority now in council, well, really continue to be in the minority, <laughs> uh, is to keep these folks honest and to actually push for real solutions. So we're working on putting together hopefully a field trip to go to Houston, Texas, where they have actually reduced their chronically unhoused population by half over the last 10 years by engaging in a housing first program. That is, you know, I think that our responsibility as elected is to follow evidence-based policies and actually have effects for community. So I hope we'll be able to do that, show these folks that there's a better way to do this, better way, a more responsible way to use our limited resources as a city and push for these real solutions. So cross your fingers, hopefully we can get there with these folks, hopefully they can see the light. And uh, yeah, as always, uh, honored to be here. Thank you all so much. And you can always reach me on Facebook at Marcano for Aurora, or you can email me at jmarcano at auroragov.org. Thank you all so much. Thank you. And you can recognize our Good morning, everybody. I'm here, I'm here to be in the audience this morning, um, but I welcome all of you and embrace you all. Um, we have been incredibly busy, um, mostly with the um, dissolution of tri county health, um, but um, we are doing a number of town halls and a number of different um, ways to communicate with everybody. We're just at the beginnings, so stay tuned for that. There's other surprises, other things going on, but I want to hear from all of you. So thank you all for your support all these years, um, and I look forward to hearing and supporting all of you. Hi everybody, my name is Ruby Dixon. I am a Democratic candidate for HD 
237, which is Centennial, Greenwood Village, uh, Foxfield, on a car freight around the county. And just wanted to come and say hi to you all. Just a little bit about myself. I grew up here in Colorado. I went to Cape Cod Public Schools, and I grew up pretty poor, so that really motivated me to become an economist. Uh, now I work in the charity sector. I advise the Philanthropic Foundation on how to find solutions to poverty and climate change. And I would say those are definitely some of my top priorities is figuring out how to make people you know, have a higher standard of living and save off climate change as much as we can. I grew up in the Louisville, so that is definitely a really big deal for me. Other things, reproductive rights, are going to be definitely in danger this year, and I'm committed to making sure that we protect those here in Colorado. And also, as I said, I went to HL public schools and really want to make sure we support our public schools in my districts and across the state. So I would love to meet all of you guys. Definitely come introduce yourselves. And I'm really excited about the support we've seen in my campaign so far, but always looking for more. So yeah, just uh, come up and introduce yourself. Before we go any further, we have somebody that is taping this. And before we go any further, please turn it off right now. Does anyone object to his taping this? Because you're all going to show up on YouTube. We have them join others so that we have a fair drawing of who is going to speak first, who is going to start answering questions first. Um, each candidate will have five minutes to introduce themselves and tell you who they are and why they're running. And then we will open it up for questions. Everyone will have one minute to answer a question. And we will rotate after that who gets to answer questions first. See Bob Reed sitting over here? Bob? Bob is our timekeeper. And he will keep everyone on the straight and narrow to make sure that everyone stays to the time limits. Okay? Our first candidate for um, County Commissioner District 4 is Javon. Javon, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I am uh, former state representative Javon Nelson. Um, I'm running to be the next county commissioner. Um, I'm running because Arapahoe County has a lot of challenges ahead of me. Uh, we've got uh, to deal with Tri-County Health. We've got to deal with a uh, crumbling uh, county jail. We've got a lot of economic issues that we need to deal with and development issues. Um, but I'm not afraid of a challenge. Um, my whole life has been overcoming challenges. I uh, was raised by a single mother who uh, had to work two or three jobs just to put food on the table. Um, I grew up in Denver during the summer of violence. And I was a kid that was considered caught in the middle. Um, I had friends that were victims of gang violence, and I had friends that were victims of police violence. Um, and most statistics say that someone coming from that background should either be in jail, in poverty, or in the ground. But I fought against that. And I went to the University of Colorado, studied political science, and ended up working for the Lieutenant Governor's Office for three years with the sole purpose of fighting poverty across the state. In fact, I uh, secured over a half a million dollars in federal funding to fight poverty across Colorado. I left that job to help run several campaigns, and I ended up losing my mind and decided to run for office and uh, join in the, the legislature. So for the legislative candidates in the room, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was in the legislature, uh, we had control of the House, but we didn't have control of the Senate. To get a bill through in that kind of environment is a huge challenge. Not only was I successful at it, but I passed over 70 bills and a constitutional amendment in my time. Uh, I fought to make sure that our counties and our cities could raise the minimum wage. I fought to make sure that our death penalty was repealed here in Colorado. I banned the chokehold. I banned the box um, on applications for... Uh, and and uh, in that time, I also served on uh, the a number of different committees. I served as the majority deputy whip. I was vice chair of the Black Democratic Caucus, the largest Black Democratic Caucus we've had in Colorado. And I was chair of that caucus for two of those years as well. Understanding those challenges, I think I'm well equipped to handle the challenges that are ahead of us in the county. And so with that, I hope to talk more about those issues and we'll go into all the details of my, my plan and solutions, but I understand that I'm not afraid of challenges. I'm willing to take on the big issues, and I'm willing to do it in a, uh, in a progressive way. 
uh, take on progressive issues without having to compromise progressive values. Um, there's a way to get there. In fact, I was just talking to a neighbor this morning because I was shoveling the snow. So I was saying things have gotten so partisan. They have, but there's still a way to get there. And I have the experience and the understanding and the know-how to do that. So with that, uh, I see I have two minutes. But I'm going to go ahead and let my, my other candidates speak because I know we're short on time. Thank you. Thank you very much on Race in the 
world. And that community dialogue included one sitting congresswoman, one federal judge, and about 50 other people on four different continents that we got together and we talked about what it looks like. So I'm in this race because I've held countless constituents as a secretary of HD41, as a former legislative aide, as, um, as a, a, a current PCP. I've been where you are. I have sat in your rooms. I have given my time, talent, and treasure to your campaigns, to your events, and boy, do I love a good, uh, a good bidding war. So I'm here today because I've been on the ground boots on the ground, serving the community. And what I'm looking forward to, to being is your next county commissioner as a creative, creative problem solver and table building to take the Arapahoe County uh, District Board to the next level. And thank you for your service, Nancy Jackson. And thank you to the other candidates. And I'm Leslie Summey, and I hope you run with me. will be 
I will be able to gain your vote, your support, and I will be successful in the primary, and I know that I will be successful in the general election. I have the experience and the background that proves that. My work through Second Chance Center has offered a voice to all of those that are justice involved, all of those that are formerly incarcerated. I was appointed by City of Aurora to be on the Business Advisory Committee where I have a voice to policymakers for the small business communities. As an owner of a catering business, I was the first out to make sure that our families in need had meals. I provided over a thousand meals each and every day to our community. I have served as our Rotary President, our Assistant Governor, and the Chair of the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee, bringing public partnerships together. And I would be honored to serve as your next County Commissioner. I ask for your support, for your vote, for your time, for your financial resources, and most importantly, I ask for your partnership. Thank you. If you have
helps on many political campaigns. And to me, when something is who you are and your way of life, it's not worth it. It's getting up every day and doing everything that you are tasked to do, challenged to do, expected to do, and want to do. And that's what I would bring to this position. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Commissioner Jackson. Um, my answer would be uh, some background. Um, most people don't know that um, over a year ago, um, I actually called Commissioner Jackson and said, what are you looking for in a successor, and what do you think the job entails? Because um, she knows. Uh, had she given me an answer of something that I couldn't do, I wouldn't be here. Um, off the top of my head, I was thinking, yes, county commissioner is, it, it, county commissioner is a great place to serve. Um, coming from that background of service, you just kind of find a need and you fill it. Uh, one of the things is, as uh, I sit now on the subcommittee of um, the JCC, it focuses on racial equity in the criminal justice system. I love that work. I love being there. I love coming up with solutions. I love seeing how other people think about it. And as a uh, legislative aide, I always told my representative that my job was to make him look good. And so what I did was I made sure that every phone call of every constituent was answered and answered well. Thank you. Anyone have questions? Now's the time. I've got a question over here. Juan? Yeah. All right. Uh, so water is our most precious resource in the state of Colorado. Uh, with the aquifer beneath uh, Arapahoe County, I think uh, projected to run dry by around 2050, and that's the rosiest case scenario. Uh, and the growing demand for residential developments, uh, or rather plans that residential developers are bringing in unincorporated Arapahoe County, typically along the perimeter of cities like Aurora. Um, and a lot of uh, those developments, including golf courses, which can use as, many, as much water in one year as 1,200 homes. Um, how can, how would you as a commissioner protect our limited water supply and work with municipalities uh, to kind of absorb some of this new housing development? Regina, you're on. Uh, want, um, again, great question. We've, we've talked about water a lot. I haven't had the opportunity to go and tour the, the water facility yet. What I do know is that it comes down to planning. When you're working with development, what is the plan on the front end on how they're going to access water? How are they paying for the resources that we have? I think that, uh, I don't want to say traditionally, but somewhat historically, we have built first and figured out how are we going to pay for and access resources later. And we need to shift that model and figure that out on the first plan and have them invested in the community, have them invested in those plans from the beginning and <coughs> be responsible to access and pay for those resources that are available. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Roncano. Um, excellent, excellent question. One of the things that, that reminds me of is hearing you speak before when you had asked about developments um, coming to uh, Aurora City and saying, hey, can we have some water? And I don't think that's fair. I think that as the county is looking at developments to approve, if we can't make sure that we're taking care of everything, then we should not be putting that on other municipalities. Another thing in terms of water is that we know that um, water rights now are, are under siege. The San Luis Valley um, water is, is uh, you know, the plan to take water from the rural communities and give it to other communities. We need to sit down with that and find a creative way to say, no, we're not gonna do that because everyone is a part of the community and water is a precious natural resource. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, water is absolutely one of our most vital resources. We say all the time that whiskey's for drinking, water's for fighting. Um, the, the key to that is, is through development, through smart development. Um, we need to quit continuing just to build out, build out, build out. That's how Aurora and Arapahoe counties become Denver's bedroom community. And we need to be a more economic player. 
So when it comes to things like golf courses, like uh, just building buildings just in order to try to attract those businesses, but they end up cannibalizing other neighborhoods. When it comes to just building golf courses because they look pretty, when we have a number of golf courses, as a county commissioner, I'll be like, no, I want to work with our cities, I want to work with our city councils, and I want to say let's look at development in a way that, one, returns investment back through either job creation or through affordable housing, um, and, and really is people-centered and not just development for the sake of development. Juvenile justice is, or juvenile uh, crimes are being impacted right now, um, especially in this district. How would you partner with human services and school boards in Cherry Creek and Aurora? What would you do? What's your plan? And do you know what resources exist right now? runs about 70 miles a week and every day that he goes out running I am concerned that uh, he's going to be another Ahmad Aubrey. Um, I know that as a parent of African American children that many, many times um, the black children and brown children are disciplined so at a much higher rate than, um, than other ethnicities. And so what we need to do is we need to make sure that not only we are going through the Human Services Department and finding out what the resources are, but we need to make sure that we change the system and not put another Band-Aid on it. Thank you. Um, for years, one, I have fought against SROs being in our schools. I don't think the cops in schools is the solution. I think it's an absolute problem it is the entry to the pipeline to prison system. Um, so I want to make sure that we're working with our school boards and finding other ways of securing our buildings, but not necessarily putting them in, putting our kids in jail. Um, we're going to have a new judicial district. I was on the Judiciary Committee when we uh, voted to uh, create a new judicial district solely for Arapahoe County. As this is becoming uh, or being developed and as we uh, elect a new DA, juvenile justice needs to be priority one. Um, it needs to be the first conversation that we sit down and we have about how do we protect our kids, again, from having their futures lost. And then uh, lastly, I sat on human service, or health and human services in the house. There are a number of different programs, there's a number of different things that we can work with the state and through the county on in terms of providing more additional resources for our schools and our school boards to ensure that if there's a deficiency, like a parent not home, that, that those kids are getting that kind of attention. Thank you. Um, again, another another great question and important topic. Uh, my work again for Second Chance Center. We work with those that are justice involved, and we are seeing that there is a higher rate of youth that need services. And where that starts is for them not getting into the system. Where that starts is with the municipalities. So what are the diversion programs? If you go through Aurora Municipal Court versus if you go through Arapahoe County, that puts you on two different trajectories in terms of what your what your um, term, so to speak, is going to be in the justice system. We can stop early. We can have more the um, more programs where we can defer more programs so we can offer resources for our youth and not criminalize our youth from high school going through, which then creates that prison pipeline. We have to stop it on the very beginning. I believe in accountability, but I believe in accountability with humanity and how can we serve our youth with humanity. Thank you. Next question. Good morning. The concern I have that is prevalent in our society today, particularly in this area, is how lack of housing. 
how do you guys plan to provide affordable housing to our community? Second question is, while you're working through that, what do you do with the people you see around that are just not housed? How do we solve that? Um, so, uh, that's kind of two questions, but the first part is, um, I think that we can work with the state in terms of getting grants and funding um, and work and then go have that funnel through our human services uh, departments in terms of rent assistance, in terms of uh, more grants and more uh, housing vouchers through, uh, for di through our different housing programs. When it comes to homelessness and, and those who are experiencing it, there's two main types of homelessness. There's acute homelessness and uh, chronic homelessness. Acute are those families that are just one paycheck away. Um, for those, that's where I think the rent assistance and, and the, the assistance that we can uh, turn to the state for will come into play. When it comes to the more chronic issues, that tends to be either mental health driven or uh, drug uh, abuse driven. And so I want to make sure that we are, um, when we have our new health department, that mental health becomes a major issue that and a major focus. And then working with our uh, human, or excuse me, our, yeah, human service department, making sure that our county is providing services towards drug prevention and uh, towards drug treatment. You're done. <laughs> so that, that was two questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is two questions I have to go for a little bit, a little bit faster. But um, for me, again, it's not so much, um, it's the getting to the root of the problem. Where are we beginning? I write a lot of grants to find people housing. We, we worked on projects that Chance Center, we have the first permanent supporting housing unit in Aurora. But what we need is where do we start from the beginning 30, 60, 90 days out before people are being evicted, before people are being put out of their homes? Where are the resources there? Where do we start from the beginning to address mental health issues and offer those wraparound services so that people aren't then self medicating or then you have issues of substance use? You have substance use disorders, you have mental health, and you have those that are in-house. It's starting at the beginning to address what those issues are, partnering again with other organizations and providing resources for our communities that are going to transition into being unhoused and then supporting those that are unhoused and offering wraparound services so that they have time to get on their feet, have a livable wage, be uh, first of all, this Wait, question comes uh, from. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry okay, I was, I was looking at Gail like, should I get up now? <laughs> So thank you, thank you, thank you for that question. Um, and and what I'm thinking about housing, we know that um, HUD has actually endorsed the housing first model. And what we know is that we have people who are full-time workers, we have daycare providers, servers, who are actually homeless. And um, so what we need to do, I believe, is we need to look at that and we need to change the system. We have all the resources in the world but if we're not changing the system as to how people become unhoused in the first place, and we need to look at attainable housing, um, not, just, not just affordable housing, because you might be able to, to get into it, but you can't, you, can't get, you can't stay there. And so we need to look at attainable housing and making sure that when people get to that cliff, that they're not gonna fall off that cliff. And that, that requires looking at the system and reworking the system so that we are going to housing first and then bringing in other services and the wraparound. Uh, I had the privilege, thank you, Commissioner Jackson, of ser serving on the Citizens uh, Advisory Budget Committee. One of the big topics we always had was transportation needs in Arapahoe County. Uh, I forget the gentleman's name that was public works director, but he, he'd come in and tell us the budget of what they had to do for transportation. And just with the maintenance, they hardly had room for improvement. What would be your plan for solving this crisis, alleviating it, reducing it? Uh, thank you. Appreciate your answers. Regina. Not 
only in Arapahoe County, but across 